Alright. My cat's so cute at the moment. He's sitting in the sun. My wife knitted him like a little cat blanket and he's sitting on that in the sun. It's pretty cute. <laughs> Wesley Wabbit. I like to keep backyard cattle in the backyard call them pets. Beef in the fridge call it family. Yeah. Well I do like my my red meat, so my chickens are awesome. Two eggs a day. Most beautiful eggs you'll ever taste. Gold and yellow. Alright, so the reeds that... I've got some reeds as well. So we've got some notes. Zent. Zent 555 is very loose. And Groove Lock 24 is a reg who multi-tables, plays 100 games per day, 10 to 12 tables at a time. So this guy's a regular. And Zent is very loose. What buy-in is this game? Three dollar buy-in. So let's do this review for Brechnia. Fortunately, I don't know who this is in the chat, but it's all good. Okay, let's go broke here with Ace King. So just shove. Good. <laughs> well, there's there's our read gone on that Zent guy. That was quick. I like this call seven six. It's very cheap to call that. Okay, we'll just check it to the river with a weak pair. Hmm. I think I just fold here. I don't know. We're getting great odds. We only need to be right 13% of the time. So, I mean, hmm. We might be able to call here, you know. Because the odds are so good, and how, how can they have a 9? This guy bet 40, and this guy only just called. So I don't think they have a 9 or a flush. So, I mean, we beat um, some 6s. We also lose to some 6s. But we beat a 3 and a 2, which they could also have. We also beat hands like pocket 5s. I think we beat enough hands to call this 40. Good call. Wow, he did have a 9. What the hell? How much a month do I spend on feeding them? Uh, not that much. I buy them like a big bag of scratch mix and a big bag of chicken pellets, and uh, that lasts two months probably, and costs like twenty dollars for each bag. This is Australian dollars, so it's like forty dollars for two months. I don't even know how much eggs cost in Australia because I haven't bought eggs in so long. But they also fertilize my garden. They shit everywhere and make the ground nice to plant in. My wife and I have a nice garden that we plant vegetables in, have our own tomatoes and cucumbers and parsley and all that kind of stuff. I'd probably call here getting 4.7 to 1, almost 5 to 1. It's good enough for me to defend for an extra big blind. Okay, call that. Alright. Check fold, seems fine. Okay, fold that. Fold, 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 fold. Yeah, okay, we don't have to defend there. Fold, 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 fold. Raise, seems fine. Bink, there's the set, that's bet. Um, 395, so he just went for half pot. I think it's a little small. I'd go a bit bigger than half pot, because I really don't want to see a turn card. I'd prefer to get it all in now. So I'd bet maybe 450 here would be my size. Bet again, yeah, all in. Good, well done. Who's this playing? This is Bretch. Vrechnia, Jen Khan. I don't know who this is in the chat. I was emailed this yesterday. Yeah, unfortunately, um, they didn't give me their Twitch name. It's a nine-man turbo.
I'll give you permission, Bistos. Try again. Okay. Apparently this one has a very long bubble, which should be very interesting. So we'll just flat call here for an extra big blind with a weak ace. I think that's good. Don't hit, so we'll just check fold. Uh, same here. It's not worth bluffing. This guy checked back, so he might have a medium pair. He could also have a stronger ace than us that he's not willing to fold on this board. It's quite a dry board. So if he has a hand like ace-jack or ace-king, he's not going to be that scared, and he'll probably call one bet. Yeah, all right. Hmm. <laughs> this is pretty tough. I think folding is the best play. It's just, it's a very awkward stack size. You can't really flat call out of position with a weak ace here. And if you 3-bet, it's pretty awkward because you're going to be committed if you 4-bet's all in. And you don't really want to go all in with this hand preflop. So we're kind of stuck in an awkward situation where our hand is okay against the button range, but because he raised three times the big blind, and the stack sizes just means we pretty much have to fold there. Similar situation here. It's just not strong enough to play as a flat call. And yeah, it's not strong enough to 3-bet or shove, so we just have to fold. Okay, fold, fold. Um, Alright, it's a little weak to raise this, so... If it was suited, I would have raised. I'll defend this, but it's not a mandatory defend. But for a min raise, getting f almost 4 to 1 in position, I'm going to call a lot of hands. So, I think defending there with 8-6 is, is fine. Alright, I'll look at your hand, Bistolus. What is this? Can you guys see that? Yeah. All in, all in, all in? Okay. Is that what happened? And the King-7 snap call. Fun. That's the spin and go. Fold that suited ace. Uh, you can just shove here with 12 big blinds effective. So it really just depends on how loose these guys are at re-stealing. Um, if they're tight passive players, then min raising is definitely the better play. But if they're loose aggressive players, then I would just shove all in. So it kind of depends. Hey Luigi, welcome, welcome. Huh. This is the regular, and it's just limping. I don't. I'm a bit suspicious. So I'll fold there. I'm. I'm kind of curious as to what hand Grevlock has. Because it's not a good play. <laughs> okay. If if I saw a regular do this, I would take a note. Because this is terrible. To open limp this kind of hand there. I mean, open limping with 13 big blinds is a valid strategy in some positions. But not in early position. It's like, you're just going to get exploited. So I would take a note. And then, next time he does this, look to exploit. And that would be by raising preflop. Or stabbing flops. Um, you know not giving him credit for a monster. Busted the roll. It's bad luck, black, white, wine. I practice that bankroll management. Right, so we're on the bubble now. Hmm. Well, there's a few lines we can take, but... I mean, you you have a sixes blind versus blind. You don't want to be folding this, so you don't want to get exploited. And we know that Grevlock is a is a regular, so it, he's a pretty strong player. So we can limp shove. We can open shove. I don't like raise folding because you just get exploited too much. So I think it comes down to getting more value by limp shoving. If if he's the type of player just to make a small raise preflop. Or we can just open shove for 23 big blinds and that's posse V. So it depends on what he does when we limp. 
if he's the type of player just to shove all in for 3,000, then, then we should shove first on him. But if he's the type of player to make a small raise and try and put pressure on us that way, then I think a limp shove might be a better line to get more value. This, I think, is the worst line, because you get exploited too much. If he flat calls, there's a ton of bad flops that we don't want to see. Obviously, if we don't have a set, most flops are bad. And if he pushes pre-flop, we have to fold. And raise folding sixes, blind versus blind, is just ugly. Like, this is really ugly. I would not play it like that. Alright. We'll fold that. That's fine. We don't really want to get involved when there's another guy that's a mid-stack already raising, so he should have a strong range, and he's raising into the chip leader. So even though our hand is decent and we're getting good odds, we just don't want to get involved with this guy's range, and also with the chip leader behind us who could try and mess around and 3-bet, and you know we have to play out of position. So this might be a call in the early stages, or in a different tournament, like a multi-table tournament, but not on the bubble of a 9-man. We're just going to fold and keep our 300 chips. Min raise, good. Hmm. Well, obviously this is good, but how do we get all the chips in now? I think we just have to shove. Flat calling is too suspicious. It's like we we call 600, we the pot's 2,000, we just go all in on any flop. I would just shove here and hope that he um, has something. So this is a good note to have as well, because we know that Grevlock is getting 2.2 to 1, so he's getting more than 2 to 1, and he falls. So he is completely full of shit. He's very ag very aggro, trying to um, abuse us on the bubble. So we have to know that he's going to do this in similar spots in the future, and adjust accordingly. That might mean limping more against him, it might mean playing a tighter range, or it might mean just open shoving the small blind instead of trying to steal. And this is a terrible play, by the way. If you 3-bet fold, getting more than 2 to 1, I mean, it's just bad. And I can show you why it's bad by doing a quick calculation. Let's say that our 4-bet range there is something like, maybe not Ace-Queen. This? Okay. So this would be a standard 4-bet range, but if we know that this guy is very aggressive and we know that he's folding in spots like this, we're going to push wider. So our 4-bet range now becomes something like this. So this is our actual 4-bet range. Let's say that he has, I don't know, 10-8 suited. He's got 32% against my range. He, the pot odds are 31%, so he can call, but there is also some ICM here that he has to think about because we're, um, we're on the bubble and losing the chip lead is significant, but when he has the chance of knocking us out, that's also going to counteract the ICM. So I think when his tournament life is not at risk, the ICM factor here is relatively small because he has a chance of knocking us out and making it in the money. So, the biggest ICM factors on the bubble are when you're putting your whole tournament life at risk. That's when you really have to put a, a larger edge on the pot odds. So here, like, if he has, even if he has a hand as bad as 10-8 suited, he has 32%, so he has enough equity to call getting 2-1. to one. So if he's going to do that, you know, it's just a bad play. And we can put in more hands to just see, like, what if, what if he has King Queen suited here? Then he has 36, and it's it's horrible. It's horrible if he has King Queen suited. What about like King Jack suited? It's still horrible because he's got 34. So the more high card hands that flip with our pairs, the worse it's going to be. Now, what if, what if he thinks that our four bet range is super tight, which it could be? then maybe the 10-8 suited is now a good 3-bet fold. But I don't think he can say that if we do this raise with ace-queen, we're just going to fold.
So yeah, end of the day, his play is ter his play is terrible, and we need to exploit him in the future. Uh, I don't like this raise. I think this is a really bad raise because there's a chip leader that we know that he wants to exploit people. We know that he wants to try and mess around on the bubble. So, and we also have a short stack here who we're going to be committed against if he pushes all in. Now that's not terrible, but the the real reason why this is not a good raise is purely because of the aggressive regular on the button. Now he has position, it's even better for him to 3-bet. Play around. <laughs> yeah, um... Hmm... This is very strong, but we're getting such good odds, and our hand actually flops well. And I don't expect him to go all in preflop. I think if we call, he's also going to call. And then we have a three-way pot to try and knock this guy out. So I, I don't mind calling here for 400. Kind of curious. Wow, he just folded. <laughs> this guy, he's a... Re see, you, you guys will see this. He's a regular. He's playing 12 tables, but he's terrible. That, that'll happen a lot at the micro stakes. Even the regulars aren't going to be the best players. Maybe he knows a little bit more than the average fish, but he's still making huge, huge mistakes. I don't like this raise. Exact same reason as the 10-9. The loose, aggressive regular is going to try and exploit you here. So just, just fold. Okay, defending there's fine. Um... What do you do if he raises? That's that's the real tough question. Are you happy going broke here? I, I am not happy to go broke with top pair, weak kicker, or medium kicker, uh, on the bubble as second in chips. So I would play this much more passively and just check call. But I guess if you're making that play um, with a plan of folding, if he is very aggressive, I don't know about that. Like, he might look at this as a situation to try and ex exploit you and try and get you to fold on just because it's the bubble. I think you kind of open yourself up to bad things. All right, the five four off is trash. Let's fold that. This is a long bubble. What's going on? Good fold there. Good fold there. Fold. Uh, you can just push all in. Um, I think. Can you push all in? Yeah, I think this is okay to push. Because we don't cover him, but we, we do really threaten his stack. The other thing, I mean, you can just fold as well, because it's not a fantastic push. It's maybe like a little over break even. And if it's a very soft game, if these two players are fish, then you don't want to take a break even push. And this is a spot where... You, you don't want to limp and you don't want to raise because he's a regular and we've seen him uh, exploiting us and abusing us in the past. So yeah, I guess folding there is okay. But I want to look that one up and see how good a push actually is or whether it's an easy fold. King 9 on the button there. Um, yeah, I think it's fine to fold because there's a short stack in the big blind and he's the chip leader. We would assume that the chip leader wants to go all in there. So I'd, I'd just leave it to him, leave the job to him, try and pick up the short stack. Okay, follow Jack 2. Okay. Call. <laughs> yeah. Ace 9 blind versus blind is just a call. Even though he's third, it's just good enough to call in this position. Especially because he should be pushing extremely loose here, at least 70%. So this is just a call. I think this one's a push. Because we have less than 10 big blinds, so there's 550 in the middle already. We're trying to win a significant portion of our stack. Suited Jack-Queen on the button against two people. Strong enough to push. Uh, this one's a fold though. Weak ace is not good enough on the bubble when we're mid stack from the from the cutoff. So we'll just fold that. That's fine. Fold that. Fold that. 
Um, hmm. This one's pretty close. Now that we're getting much, much shorter, it might be time to push this Ace-9. It really depends on their core ranges, especially the, the big stack. I'm not too worried about these core ranges, because they should be pretty tight. I'm more worried about this guy. I think if he's a loose player, it's, it's just a fold. But if he's somewhat tight with his calls, it, it could, be a, could be a push there. I think it's close. Let's see what the odds, what actual odds we're getting. We have to call. Well, his whole stack is 11.94. So the pot will be. Uh, what's that? 16, 17, 40, 17, and we have to call uh, 900. So we're not getting. Well, it's very close to two to one. Hmm, I think this would be a call, because it's basically 2 to 1. It's like 1.95 to 1. And it's a suited king, so it's not total junk. Yeah, this for me is a call, because of the pot odds. Okay, we'll fold that against the chip leader. Fold that. Fold that. Fold that. Hmm, it's a fold. This guy's range should be very tight. Because there's a guy shorter than him left, and he's pushing into the chip leader. <laughs> he folded getting 2.2 to 1. This guy has no idea about pot odds, so you need to take a note on him and say he does not understand pot odds and push super loose against him, even with the short stack. Uh, yeah, that's a fold. Ooh. <laughs> so... Either this guy is just bad and he doesn't know that you should push here, or he's trying to exploit the bubble by keeping this guy alive and taking more chips from you guys, from the mid stacks. And if he's using that strategy of trying to keep the bubble alive, you actually need to start limping your button, just so that the short stack doesn't get a walk, because this is horrible for you. This is the worst thing that can ever happen to you. So the way you counter that strategy is by limping your button. Because then the short stack's going to be all in. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Because he's, he's just pushing any two cards now. Okay, yeah, all in. <laughs> he folds getting 3 to 1. What the, what the, what's going on? I don't understand how that's a good idea. Uh, I'd go all in here. You only have three big blinds, so what are you waiting for? Suited jack on the buttons, good. Same, oh, this one I think is a fold because the big blind's short. We're hoping that he busts out for us. Okay, it's fine. Ace queen, nothing to say. Fold that, short stack. Yep, okay. Fold that. Fold that. All in, really short stack. Good. This guy's terrible. It's way too tight calling. Fold that. It's a nine. Man, turbo tournament, Luigi. Mm, we fold because we're not in last place. I mean, he's good with his pushes, but he d has no idea um, how to construct a core range. Mm. Yeah, I think this one's fine. Obviously, it's a suited ace blind versus blind. <laughs> and we've seen him fold, getting 3 to 1. Hmm. Pretty strong for you. I think for one big blind, I'd just call and try and knock him out four ways. Um, yeah, we just... Wow, this sucks. I think we have to fold. I think we have to fold here because of the ICM. We, we There's two guys shorter than us, and we have to assume that... This guy's pushing and, you know, they're going to probably get knocked out before. So I really don't think this is a strong enough hand to push. Even though we only have three big blinds, it's just a situation where these guys only have two big blinds. They're going to have to get it all in before us. So we're in like a folding war here, which is not good, but sometimes that happens. Okay, Ace-10 is the nuts. That's fine. 
Eh, Pottles got a call. Uh, yeah, your hand's strong enough to go all in here. Too nitty. Wow, we're getting walks now? Okay. Fold. This is a fold. Because... Oh, wait. What happened to this guy's stack? Alright. He lost a huge pot here. It's all against kings, and now he has no stack. Alright, I thought he still had a giant chip lead. Because he's got no stack, I think it's a great push. Because now we put a lot of pressure on his chips. And we've seen him fold before getting crazy odds, so that's fantastic. But if he was the chip leader, then I would not push that. You know, if he had the 8,000 chips like he had before. He'll fold that one. Fold that one. 2 to 1 here. But our hand is much worse than before. So I think folding this, getting 2 to 1 is okay. Especially because on future hands, we can get a lot of value by pushing blind versus blind because this guy's way too tight. All in. All in. <laughs> he was he had 9,000 chips and he, and he bubbled. Pretty... that sucks when that happens. Okay, all in. Good. All in. Yep. All in. Okay. Fine. Brechnia... Just way too tight on the bubble in some situations. You need to just practice your bubble ICM with a uh, ICM calculator like Singo Wizard or Holden Resources or even the ICM Trainer would probably help you. Just really practice those bubble hands. There are a lot of mistakes there that cost you a significant amount of money.